Welcome to episode three of Nuka Mac, a Vampire the Masquerade virtual tabletop campaign. So what the hell happened in episode two? Uh, Blake, who plays Archibald Alvins, uh, would you care to start us off with a synopsis of the, uh, the clusterfuck of episode two? Last time. On New Gamak, <laughs> four four real hot young vamps. They were in the club in at Club Wonderland, and they met Randy, a very drunk, disgraced prince of the town, and he was taking them on a guided tour. He showed them. There, his swanky mansion, which uh, was dusty. Uh, we read a strange note that alluded to some bad vampires coming around, and there's like an underground surveillance station that we got to check out at some point, if any of us are smart enough to remember. We've got... We, we have hints about a very mysterious... Uh, scary curse chess game that may have something to do with what happened to Randy. By the way, Randy used to be a good prince, but now he last this year has been very bad. He got very bad at his job. And, now, <laughs> and that's why we're coming in to take over things. But things aren't starting swimmingly because in the middle of the tour, we are driving to meet the other vampires who live here. And we got assaulted by uh, a renegade orchestra who was also a gang and then uh they were trying to kind of strong arm us a little bit so we, we kind of roughed them up but then instead of oh, I'm, up, Archibald, we, I'm sorry I, I can't help but think you're burying the lead a little bit about about how that went down your your role in particular uh, about that the incitement of of that, of oh that yeah conflict. and then <clears throat> You, you Both see, of you went from one to zero to a hundred real quick there. Well, I'm a big classical music fan, is all. And when I made a request for Vivaldi, that's right. Uh, that's right. They, they made just a very, they did it bad, so we beat them up. It was on them. And uh, Augustine did a stab. It got to then, a point where um, they sort of set us on fire. Well, they didn't set us on fire. Oh, okay. But they set Randy in the car very on fire, and Randy's yeah. dead, and we're kind of stranded. <laughs> and that's that brings us about up to speed, unless I forgot something. So there's also that how Randy died. He was as interesting because he was like covered in alcohol. He has been drinking nonstop. Yeah, uh, the dude nonstop. He's a booze hound a little bit. We've met him, and he's been giving us this tour. I think so by the time we get in the car, he is he is pretty much bathed in one fifty one, and then the orcs come in, and their instruments are electro charged somehow. <laughs> um, vampires, am I right? Yo, 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 yo. Well, yo. I mean, as, as a musician, uh, Andy can tell you this too. Like electric oboes really are like a pretty big trend right now. It is electric the guitars show. were big like <laughs> in the 1900s. This century is going to be all about those electric woodwinds. I can tell it already. Well, one of the orcs did mention that they have a boss who built special instruments for them specifically to deal with uh, people who might be resistant to their muggings. Basically. They alluded to them having a boss who who builds weaponized instruments for them. Yeah, and it's probably the person who, like, on the train, because the whole reason traffic was stopped is because the train stopped on the tracks, you know. Typical new Kamak, I guess. So And the train <laughs> did seem to start immediately when the when yeah. the orcs wanted it to, hmm. so hmm. you can yeah, draw conclusions. So, so the alcohol covered Randy plus electricity equals fire. So we had to evacuate the vehicle. Um, and yeah. And the then, smell was rancid. So bad. I'm kind of worried that Randy never will make it to the Middle East. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> he will not make it. <laughs> Unfortunately. 
That's not going to say. That's not to say he won't try. Yeah. So they were trying to send him to the Middle East um, to have him celebrate his retirement. I guess he just kind of has given up because there is some sort of like thing in the like catacombs of the town that he has not dealt with. Oh yeah, and lots of vampires right. are left. So there's like five. And there's also this surveillance left. room that has been left unattended that if found by humans would expose the vampires to the humans. So we need to like destroy that for destroy that too. Did these eidetic memory people miss any uh tidbits? Uh that's that's most of it. Also, the the note left by the previous right. sheriff of New Kamak, uh, the right. Nosferatu named Bagger, uh, also alluded to there being Sabbat vampires yeah. moving into town. Granted, this note was written many months ago, about nine months ago, so it might no longer be the case. Uh, it's It's unknown whether or not this is still current information. Logically, if it was nine months ago, then the Sabbats have probably carried a baby to term. <laughs> and we're very <laughs> extra in the story. Branding geometrically. What if this whole story just ended up with being like three men and a baby, but it was us uh, with a baby? And that was like the whole of the adventure. Three men and a bad lady. Yeah. <laughs> three men so, and Chicago. So... Uh, it was Prince Delacroix's intention to uh, escort the four of you to the Tremere Chantry to introduce you to the Tremere there. And mm-hmm. uh, Leslie Lane. We're going. So we're kind of halfway between the mansion and the Tremere. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, and here's a question that I'm asking uh, as the player, as Blake, because Archibald would know the answer to this. Yeah, but Blake wants to know, what is a Chantry, though? Uh, a Chantry is, in this context, uh, it's kind of like the, the Tremere's frat house. Any sufficiently sized city with the Tremere population uh, so would Tremere. have a house where all the Tremere communally live together and study it's it's the magical communal house for the tremere where they traditionally live all together and do all their creepy magical stuff beer bongs stuff like that so not all magical stuff is creepy no, it's pretty much all creepy that they do um <laughs> the tremere's magical stuff is pretty much all creepy yeah oh dick. so you're about it was, it's all tree related in which case it's you got about halfway to the Chantry. You're about mm-hmm. six blocks to the Chantry, and you're about six blocks from uh, Delacroix Manor. You could walk back to Delacroix Manor, where Jade, uh, Randy's ghoul, is still waiting there. Uh, you could walk to the Chantry, where you can still meet up with the Tremere. Your choice. Um, so- is there anything we need to grab? So, and I thought we were going to start the game by declaring kind of what our intention was to spend our experience points on and kind of how we were focusing. Oh. Oh. What? Yeah, let's go back to last session. Sorry to be mid max guy here, but, you know, we got XP. Let's do this. Yeah, uh, we've skipped over that. Uh, yeah, all of you have six oh God, experience points uh, from the last. Oh. Uh, would you like to, uh, do any of you have, uh, plans right now for your, your six experience points? Would you like to spend any of those now? August then <laughs> holds on to his no. and just patiently <laughs> doesn't spend them because he's still overwhelmed with what is happening. Okay. I take I'm it, saving well. I take it Darby has experienced a sudden personal growth <laughs> of some sort. Um, well, yeah, I, I have I have some things that I've, I'm leaning into here. I thought that uh, one of my goals on my character sheet is to beef up my willpower, uh, and so I'm I'm trying to lean into my you know my nature to expand my my willpower um, pool. So I thought I, I thought I did that uh, in our last session, and that's something I'm continuing to work toward. So I don't know how much each point of willpower costs. The cost of gaining a willpower point is your current willpower rating, which for you is five. five. And what is the cost of one 
talent. If it's something that you have a current rating in, it's your current rating times two. Okay. So I could spend all six and get that point of brawl. Correct. Oh, I see. Okay. Who needs willpower when you can just beat dudes up? Come on. It's so good. It's so good. It's the strongest thing in the game. It is it is insanely, insanely strong. Willpower is the most versatile thing on your character sheet. Um, it's still my goal, but I think honestly, just for my own self governance, I want to role play more for the willpower. I think I did just like tussle. I flew off the handle and brawled with people last game, so I think it makes more sense to allocate my points into a point of brawl. So I would like to take a fourth point of brawl, and I'm wondering what specialties are available now that I've gotten a a superhuman level of brawl ability here. Specialties that are available for brawl. Yes. Well, Level four, I believe, block specialties, specialization. Uh, I say you go with Rav Maga, buddy. <laughs> oh, that'd be dope. I think it might be more fair, <laughs> rather than no. looking up what specialties are available, uh, figuring out from a role playing perspective what specialties make sense for Darby. Perhaps he can okay. find a specialization organically through through the story and through I think the that, experiences that he has. Maybe like dunking I on... That's, I think that's a fun way to do it. I do think that part of the benefit of getting up to level 4... Vehicular kind of hand-to-hand hand combat, perhaps? Imagine <laughs> 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 that with level 4. You get to drive and throw the car. Avenging, um, avenging the innocent? <laughs> Alright, yeah. let's roll away for it. I'm fine with that. So I'm just going to take uh, level 4 of Brawl with my experience. It's something that I'm honestly, uh, I'm not going to make you jump through a lot of hoops for, uh, but I, I think it would be, it would be a bit more rewarding if you, if you find something yeah. rather than just like pick something from a list. I, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in that. I think that's a fun thing. To, honestly, you know, perhaps, perhaps by the end of this session, you'll, you'll find something that makes, that makes sense to you. I'm- awesome. So it was Prince Delacroix's intention to take you to the Tremere, introduce you to them, and then he was going to go back to Delacroix Manor and retire back to that, uh, that weird gun safe that he was going to lock himself inside and uh, mm-hmm. wait till that was now. shipped off to the Middle East. And uh, mm-hmm. he was going to offer Delacroix Manor for... All of you to uh, to sleep in during the day. So my first question is: Do we have any um, immediate concerns about like the masquerade and how we just like caused such a scene? You know, Augustine stabbed a guy. I think those guys tried to clean stuff up too. They were interested in this not getting out of hand as well. So are we? And we may have talked about this last time, so I apologize. But are we um, confident? starting that we can just like go about our business or are we feeling like oh man we fucked up like we have to keep a low profile whatever we're doing like what's what's kind of our the the situation that you were left with uh at the end of the last session was there were witnesses to the fight it was unclear whether or not anyone saw that there was a stabbing because uh the person that Augustine stabbed was leaning into the car. Uh, it was really anyone's guess whether or not anyone saw the details of that. As soon as the train left, all the witnesses fled. You were left alone with the burning car. At this current moment, you are alone in the street with the not on fire anymore car. There aren't any emergency vehicles moving into the area. There aren't any witnesses in the street. It's just you alone in the street. Okay. Uh, there aren't any other people around. It's a little bit past midnight. Uh, it's just you completely alone. And there aren't any immediate signs of there being any consequences so far. All right. So I think Darby is visibly just really sad. And it's like, oh, man, like we, we've got to do 
what the prince wanted us to do. I can't believe. Oh my gosh, it was like our first job, and he's dead. He's like fucking everything up. Oh shit, we gotta go to the premiere. Let's go. Let's go. You know, Derby, I understand your feelings right now. Um, as hello, um, I myself, I am also sad okay. about the PC crew. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let Let's go there. I am just. I'm in a place I've never been. Did I don't people know where speak? things are. Do we Do have think- an address? I'm people now. You think, I, you think I'm shaking up about the car? That thing's a piece of trash. A little it was bit. To drive it. I'm so oh. glad it has been destroyed. I'm shaking up what? about the prince, you know, our friend, the guy that was going to interview us around, yeah. show us yeah, what the well, hell was. I mean, I guess we got to keep going, right? So, but, yeah. but who knows where we're going? Darby, do you know where we're going? Uh, yeah, I, you I know. feel like at a game, I would have put the an address in my phone. Is, is like super I'm just like prone Google to maps. doing that. You all remember, well, those of you with the photographic memory remember the address uh, 1324 South 4th Street being given to you by Randy. Who has that photographic memory? So... Um, Two well, of you really actually do. Augustine work. and um, Augustine has it. Oh, just Augustine has it. Oh. I specifically really just like don't really want to waste time at a dried up car. I really want to get to We're Leslie Lane. Like, I like how the person with the photographic memory was the one who's like, does anybody know where we're going? Because <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Lead the way to your people. Let's go. Yeah, you have like your Tremere right, you know senses address, or whatever, go. right? So, so, so personally, I don't have much concern for the appearance of a burnt-ass car. Uh, I'm just going to kind of rally crew and like... I want to go. This whole time I've been secretly like, I think we shit, they're it. taking us to some Tremere. I do have one major question. Um, what should we do with our roast Randy? Hello? I mean, I don't think we should leave him in the car. Because we need to fire plug. Hide him in the gun safe, right? Ashes. So I think, I think it's not not going to be much of an issue. Yeah, his body is quickly decaying into ashes. Well, uh, he's pretty much gone. Okay, yeah, to the Tremere, let's go. Wouldn't want to hold up the story anymore. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 want, I, I want to go. I, you know, I, I don't want to be found out. I want to go. Prior to our departure, I, I quickly scoop, just a scoop of Randy Ash and stuff it into my pocket. <laughs> That's a good Tremere. And then we depart. <laughs> <laughs> I I see him and not understand me. I think it's like a, I I think it's in a scenario and I take some too. What did Darby say? I asked if he was going to plant something in that. Um. <laughs> and what did Archie? What did Archibald do? He took some. I, I can't. I don't understand vampire like, customs, so I cool. assume that he is like paying really his fresh. respect somehow by doing this. So I take, I take a little scoop too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I guess this is what we do. Incredible. I'm grossed out by it entirely. Don't like it one bit. Darby, are you gonna take it? <laughs> We're all no. Why? Okay. It's disgusting. Why would you run your hand through that? Ugh. <laughs> My pocket is full, and I'm plodding on. <laughs> I'm I'm following the the tree man. Okay, so yeah, let's go. So you continue on to the chaw tree. Get somewhere. Indeed, yeah. indeed, but on foot. We're gonna go ahead. It's only like six blocks, so we can just go back later. I think we probably put the address from Augustine into Excavo's phone, and we are following the GPS instructions to get to the chaw tree. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> you walk about six blocks. Uh, you eventually get to a historic neighborhood with big, old, expensive-looking buildings. Oh, you walk up I to this. I want to live there. It looks cool. You walk up to this three-story red brick house in historic neighborhood. 
Uh, there's a small lawn surrounding the property with a short fence surrounding that lawn. Um, mm -hmm. The area looks like it's been maintained by a groundskeeper. Um, you walk up to the door and there is a there's a uh, gargoyle head door knocker with a heavy metal ring in its mouth. Okay, I do want to ask real quick before we do anything else. Is this a real house that exists, this picture we're seeing, or is this just a computer-generated house like all the people? This is a real house. It's at the real address that I gave you, and it's actually in Louisville. And uh, I picked a house that uh, is actually within driving distance if we want to visit it sometime, if we want to visit the actual uh, Chantry. Next wow, time really? we go down to Zanzibar, we'll have to check it out. Check out Rebecca Black again. Rebecca Black is a character in this Swing. I got the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> anyway, um, I definitely uh, have guys, to I'm a little nervous about. Uh, gargoyles. I always think they're going to reach out and bite me. Is somebody else want to knock this thing? I, that... I just stoically stroll directly up to the door and just, with a real stern, annoyed, quiet fist, just... After a long while, you hear a shuffling from inside the building. And something... You hear something come up to the door, but not answer it. Hello? 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 Um, yes, I just, hi. We're friends of Randolph. I just give the door a good sniff. Just. Hello, we have an appointment? Oh, oh God. God. Is there like a premiere? What is going on over thing? there? Is there like a, a secret dude sniffing the door? Or... I, I guess. It, it, it just smells like old wood, so, you know, I just, I had to give it a real good once over. Mm -hmm. You you hear something mm -hmm. unlatch in the door, and the doorknob opens up. The doorknob turns, and the door opens up, and standing before you is a mysterious seven-foot-tall creature that looms over oh, wow. you, and... And stares at you really closely and doesn't say anything at all. It appears to be human, maybe, but with just a, just a genetic carnival. It's female, apparently, but just uh, just odd things going on with its teeth. Its its limbs are just not the right proportion. It's wearing a brown sweatshirt brown sweatpants and crocs and as soon as it opens up the door and and looks at all of you it it starts slowly shuffling backwards shuffling backwards shuffling backwards but still sort of leaning forward and leering and lo looming at you shuffling I, backwards into I, this I, I generally raise a gentle hand and just kind of like casually wave 180 degrees and hey i'm here to see miss lane is it cool if i can i and i just kind of like point inside the door towards the nearest hallway it points to itself Our wait are you are you the new miss lane It points to itself and it leans in really close to you. And this thing, when you get more, when you get closer to it, just more details of its body just start coming out. Its its fingernails are just bizarrely thick, like someone layered like three fingernails on top of each other. It has like really th like thick, uh, like finger hair. Like it has, like on? it has eyelashes growing out of the backs of its fingers. It sounds it, like Gollum's mom. It has like, like just an odd bone structure. It's all tilted and strange, and it leans in really close to your face, and it's just breathing really heavy, 
and it's just breathing and it's just leaning in really close to your face and it's just waiting and it's just pointing at itself i give it a big old hug just just with without hesitation when its face is up against my throw out my arms and just give it a big old just bear hug it's shaking its head it's shaking its head no <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that and it and it holds up its its finger one finger he's got to buy it first damn Augustine consent man you got to ask first jesus I'm very woke, bro and it, and it points at itself and it and it and it leans in like it's going to tell you something and it says i'm batman and it runs in full sprint out of the room backwards while maintaining eye contact with you. Full sprint backwards. It's running in full sprint backwards while maintaining eye contact with you. And it runs out of a door the opposite side of the room. Runs right through it while looking at you backwards. And now you're alone in the room. Yikes. And it's We're a rough night. Us too. I quizzically is, turned her around to everybody like that. Is this regular Tremere type of shit? Like, is this yeah, the kind of, type of thing you're used to? That was not or? supposed to happen. Um, so you take in the foyer that you're in. Uh, other than the entrance you just passed through, there are three doors. There's the one across from you that that thing just ran through. Uh when the door opened, you got a glimpse of a dining room on the other side of it. There are doors to the left and the right. Uh, there's uh, beautiful woodwork all over. There's uh, ornately upholstered furniture. This is a damn nice house that's been taken care of really well. And you hear the sound of someone coming down some stairs just kind of somewhere nearby in the house. And after a few moments... Someone comes out through the door to the right. And out comes this gentleman. And he says, Hail, surely you were the four guests whom Sir Glass told us to expect on this night. I am Leslie Lane, the regent of the Tremere of New Kamak. It is my understanding that you will all be temporarily assuming leadership of the city. And who are all of you? What are your names? I, I, Darby, what's up? You can call me Excavo. Um, yes, nice to meet you. I'm Archibald Alvins. I am Augustin, eighth generation spawn of Mazengolf. So he is also a Tremere. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Re- Regent Lane. <laughs> Regent Lane, with, with clasped hands, uh, walks up and, and gives a little bow to each of you and, and closes the, the front door behind you. Uh, says, well, excellent. Um, know that I served actively as an advisor to Lord Delacroix and am more than willing to lend my wisdom as well as any assistance that my clan can offer. Well, um, I, I invite you... I invite you to to join me in our parlor and uh, let's discuss how we might be able to offer you assistance. Also, I expected uh, Lord Delacroix to be joining you. Will has he already retired for the night? Well, he's he, retired forever, he my retired. guy. <laughs> he, he he is very retired. There, there, um, was, there was an accident on the way up. I um, wanted to keep it a secret, but you just seem like a great guy or i know i can trust you leslie lane um i feel awkward there. Is anybody else to tell him no he got jumped there are these guys with musical instruments that were electrical and they were robbing people and they killed the prince and i mean you know randy he's kind of usually covered in the alcohol and one thing me too, me too. The alcohol, they killed the prince Right we tried to valiantly her. defend him, but you know, in the back, we had we we had to defend his honor. We, we could we not tried, see him. We tried to take care of him. Yeah, the well, got him. all that. So the parlor is over here through this door. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, let's sit down and then we'll we we can tell you all about all like they killed. Randy. Randy, I'm sorry, that was rude. Where are our manners? We should really have a seat before all. 
We should have gone Le- Le- for- Leslie looks uh, shocked and bothered, but uh, <sighs> not sure how to react to this news. He's he's processing it a bit. He takes you. All right, Darby just like claps him on the back and walks into the uh, parlor. He takes you through back. the through the room on the right. Uh, it's a it's a dimly lit room with more comfortable furniture where the Tremere receive and entertain their visitors. Uh, it has a billiards table and a poker table set up on opposite ends of the room and two long couches in the center with a heavy mahogany table between them with an open box of cigars resting atop it. Uh, there's a bar and a collection of fine wines and liquors for mortal visitors to drink. There's a turntable and a collection of vinyl records next to the bar. Uh, and Regent Lane sits down and begins to try to understand what he's been told. So, are there refreshments? Are there drinks? Or what is there anything like just sitting within reach of us? There are drinks, but they all appear to be alcoholic drinks for mortals. For mortals, okay. So, what you are telling me, you arrived tonight. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. within a matter of hours ago. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. So, Lord Delacroix perished just mm-hmm. now. Yes, it, it just yeah. now. It was, it, about yes, we, we, back, yeah. we just walked so, away so, from the accident. For it's fresh. Now. He and. M- Mortals killed it? Mortal hunters? Well, unclear. We're not sure. They had I don't know if you're familiar with the weaponry. Orchestra. So I don't know if they were mortal or not. They had tools capable of... They know, seemed to have right? a, a very consistent method, so that uh, was not the first time that they've done something like that. Is, is the orchestra a... A, a mortal group of you're referring to them like it's a a, a group of hunters yeah, wait, or uh, a, a group of musicians similar really well i suppose that that's what an orchestra is no if this is a, a group of of ne'er-do-wells um i i'm not familiar with the the mortal groups so much mm. i i mostly ah. keep to myself here in the the chantry but uh, no, I, I'm not familiar with this this orchestra, but um, he was set on fire. He was so, electrocuted, and you know, he was alcohol oh. very much. We Man. could not get him to stop. Still, oh. you would not. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, oh, so oh, we were dear. in a vehicle. Oh dear! They come to the vehicle. They attack. Yeah, we're, oh dear. We're also at quite a lots of what to do. You see, we're new in town. He did, he he offered us his place to stay, but other than that, I really don't know where much else is. We well, don't even know why we're here, really. Well, the way that Lord Glass, the the Archon, explained it to me was. You are sent in to lead the city in Lord Delacroix's stead for one year and until permanent leadership could be put in yes. place because Delacroix is retiring and yes and being mm-hmm. sent elsewhere. Well, so, now he's dead. Yeah, and yes. well, he was. He told us about the plans to go to the Middle East. Uh. Yes, uh, Delacroix himself alluded to me to he had some sort of important assignment that uh, the Camarilla was sending him on because he was important and uh, very very qualified to to be sent on secret missions. Uh, I I didn't question it. Um, I was led to believe that uh, the four of you are uh, how would you say a, a crack team of. Um, problem solvers for for cities that are in dire straits. Ah, uh, so. that. Mm, I mean, uh, peut-être. Um, Is that exactly we, uh, the archons with that? Uh, yes. Huh. We have not There's known each other very well. 
Well, that appears to be the position that you are in now, regardless. And uh, yeah. I would be happy to assist you in that regard for the remainder of, uh, of the year. That oh, oh, well, that is wonderful Wait. to hear. What more can you tell us about the city? Because we learned some very strange things from the late Lord Delacroix uh, about There's some I mean, disappearances of kindred and... And There's something on the ground. I'm not sure how much you're privy to. Disappearances. What have you learned specifically from Delacroix? So, from Delacroix, a Nosferatu sheriff um, had left. Um, Backer has has left. Gangrel had gone feral. Now draining I, mortals. I I knew of. Of River, the the gangrel. I, I helped take care of. Well, I I helped. That that has not been resolved yet, but I I, I did help intervene with that. I, I was aware of that. Are you aware of how many kindred are left in the city? Memo. I am aware of the three Tremere uh, that mm-hmm. are here in this. Chantry. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm aware of the two gangrel in the city. Two or mm-hmm. one. I, there's at least one gangrel. There, there may be two. I'm, I'm not certain. I, I mostly I stay in the in the chantry, so I'm, I'm not really up to date. I, I th- thought that there were at least half a dozen Nosferatu. If Bagger has left, then th- that's one less Nosferatu. Um, uh. He told us five. Okay, so um, there, there should be there should be a, a fair amount of, of Nosferatu, unless if the rest of them have, have followed Bagger wherever he has gone. Um, there, there is a a, a Bruja. Um, um, he went to find a Gangrel who went feral. Both of them have not come back. That is what I was afraid of. Oh, and uh, our harpy, uh, the Toreador, uh, Jeffrey, he, he oh, DJs yeah. at, uh, at Delacroix's club. Yeah, we met Jeffrey. Yes, he's there. Real rocking tunes, that he's one. Spinning. Okay. Uh, uh, apparently there's a, something underground that has driven them away, and it's it, he seemed to have not had any idea what's going on sorry driven driven who away so the the gangrel and the bruja and the uh, the sheriff they all seem to be afraid of something and we want to know how best to investigate what that would be well i'm i'm not i'm not certain what what you're referring to about something being underground? What? Where did you hear this from? This was all from from Delacroix. He he was drinking so much. I'm trying to even figure out what's the truth and what's uh, it's fantasy. See, this has been the problem for for the past many months from Delacroix. Something has happened with him, and we haven't been able to get clear information. He has stopped having regular community meetings with us we he has not been the leader that he has been we haven't been able to solve problems as a group we haven't had clear lines of communication um everything has kind of fallen apart so the things that you're talking about i i don't even know what this underground problem is oh and then on top of that bagger left a note who we left a note? That. Bagger. He left a note. That's um, where we learned all that information, though, he, right? Uh, yes, yeah, some yeah, from Delacroix, yeah. some from the note. The note says that um, the, the the living, the mortals, they are doing some infrastructure work, and somehow this is going to expose the vampires in some way. Oh, the, the Nosferatu... Uh, they dwell underground in in tunnels, in 
in the sewers, in the drainage tunnels, in uh, in some cities in abandoned subway lines, uh, maintenance tunnels, and in tunnels that they dig themselves. Uh, I believe the clan calls their network of tunnels uh, warrens, like uh, what rabbits live in. Um, it would make sense that if there were some sort of large underground uh, mortal tunnel digging operation that was suddenly exposing Nosferatu yes. tunnels, yes. that would that would worry that clan that all of their living areas would be exposed that um, and that might drive the clan out that they would feel like they could no longer safely live in this city if they can no longer safely dwell underground anywhere underneath New Kamak. That that might be what happened. Now, what exactly is happening underground and why it's so widespread in the city that they feel like they can't dwell underground anywhere in the city, it's anyone's guess. I, I This is the first I'm hearing about any of this. Yes, and he also said uh, it was a... Um surveillance room of some sort that we have to shut down before it is uh, discovered? Yes. Um, the Nosferatu have served as the uh, intelligence gathering group for Delacroix, and it would make sense that they would have some sort of apparatus underground to, to tap into surveillance cameras and maybe other spy devices um, in a way that's centralized in one place, maybe in one room where all the monitoring devices are, I suppose. No, it, may, it may have good information in there. Now, do you think there would be a way that we could use the surveillance space versus destroying? Or do you, would you think that something like that would have to be gone? I would think that Bagger's apprehension would be that if humans got into that room and investigated it, they might be able to find information about us. But I would think just a lock on the door or disguising the entrance or doing what the Nosferatu do, which is making it difficult to get into that. Making... There might be a way if we're able to... We got a tree guy. Maybe he if can we're do able to get into or the something. structure without having to go in that room, then to keep that room locked down, locked off, and then we're able to access said information elsewhere to well, get back into the surveillance system, per se. If you were... Well, there's only one way to find out. If you were sufficiently well, clever, perhaps... I'm with Archibald. So if you wanted to go uh, talk to these Nosferatu, how would you go about uh, doing that? Well, I don't know where where any of them are. Um, if they were still in the city... have a phone number, or like the main guy, when y'all got to get together, you don't like have a phone tree or something? It seems like the sheriff is lost. If I needed to speak to the sheriff, I would normally speak to Lord Delacroix, and then mm -hmm. if something rose to sure, the importance sure. so of he, contacting the he's sheriff... Dead. So let's let's take like one step further. If, if if the dead guy was not available to talk to, who, who might who might you ask? Darby, I think that's it. Unfortunately, Darby, I think that's us. What? I think we what? are it. Ah, yeah. what? So okay. We well, need. Let to, me let me try. Let me try. Let me try different. Let me try. In layman's terms, we need to make a new phone tree. Well, okay. So we got this guy. Well, okay. Well. Sir, is it can that, I have your number? Is it that yeah, you need... You oh, oh, my number? Yeah. Oh, yes. I, really? Can we get your number? Oh, absolutely. And he, he writes his phone number on a on a piece of paper and, and hands it to you. Excavo, take care of that. Beep boop, motherfucker. This is how I do it. All right. Um... So, like, if you just went in the sewers and started looking for them, they have, like, a part of town that they are known to bang about in, or... I nominate Darby for looking in the sewers. 
I think I nominate all of us Archibald to stick together. We're we're like leading this whole thing as a team. So I don't know why I got to go in the sewers by myself looking for. Yeah, I do. I, guess I do hope that the late Randy Delacroix does have some like spare clothes in there that I can get. I don't want to ruin my nice duds. I, I gotta say, I don't know if I agree with your priorities right now, but okay, yeah. Let's try to find you some beater clothes that you can yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much anything oh, that I own is available. Such. All right. Again, wizard guy. Do they have like a like a part of town that if we went to the sewers in that part of town, we were like more likely to find them? Or, or like, what, like what? I want to wrangle us some notes for We gotta help them. They don't know they need help, but we're coming for them. The closest thing to knowing where they're more likely to to be is is knowing where their feeding territory would be. Any any kindred would have even those that dwell underground would need to surface to feed from mortals. And normally in any well run city, and that has not described Newcomac lately. In any well-run city, the city is divided into feeding territories so that we are not at each other's throats competing over who is going to feed from mortals in any given neighborhood. Delacroix might be able to answer the question of which part of town was where the Nosferatu were given exclusive feeding rights in, and you might be able to hang out in that part of town and wait for a Nosferatu to pop up and... Uh, be caught feeding, but the Nosferatu are known for not being easy to spot. Um, Do you know if he was an avid note taker? Uh, Delacroix? Yes. Yeah, he uh, seemed he, to top. He may have been. <laughs> I, we may be able to find this information in his um, estate. I have an idea. Um, Mr. Lane, could we get the sort of map, so to speak, of you and the Tremere's feeding territory. I'm sure that from Delacroix's people, we can get a map of his. We can see what overlaps and what areas are left to begin our search, no. uh, since we can't directly ask the Nosferatu to pinpoint their own location. Our feeding territory is, is actually this this neighborhood that we're we're currently in. That's that's as much as I can tell us about about this. Excavo, your phone makes a makes a little notification sound, and and an app. Uh, sorry, the phone that you stole earlier tonight from Club Wonderland makes a notification sound. Oh, um, uh. <laughs> uh, oh, what is this? An an app has been opened on it. Oh, oh, I think I might know what that is. It's a Find My Phone app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I know what that notification is. I the phone is getting. Someone's calling the phone. No, no, no. I end. <laughs> Some, I hold down the power button to turn it off. Someone's calling the phone again. I I hold the power button and I turn off the phone. Thanks, Cabo. What's uh, going on with that thing? <sighs> you know, burner phones. You never know what spam person is going to get your phone number. Why? <laughs> <Lie? laughs> the math's great. The people are going to find us. Regent Lane yeah. continues. Do you do you need to take that? No. He, I don't know that number. I don't. Uh, he continues. Did did the note that Bagger left you, did, did it say anything about the disposition of the rest of the Nostratu clan in New Kamak? Mm -hmm. The mortals are doing infrastructure. is going to expose the vampires. Plus, we need to destroy this phantom before mortals mm -hmm. find it. it. It just seemed very much... Uh, about the um, the underground, and also um, that they are concerned about uh, what is down there, and that the mortals may find us via their infrastructure uh, project. 
So the note didn't say whether or not it was just him leaving or other Nosferatu were staying behind or leaving? Not in my recollection, no. Okay. All right. Can I? The other other muscle. But like in Augustine's recollection, would the answer to that question be different? Maybe. So I think that means two Nosferatu. So just, so the Gangrel, the Bruja, and then the Sheriff. Oh, bear in mind the... Uh, the note is in the. Um, oh my gosh. Everyone has it in the the journal. Oh, nope, from Sheriff Bagger. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, they did collapse a bunch of uh, tunnels on the way out. Um, there, he does use us, so there is more than one. They had to. So they uh, they were trying to shut down the surveillance room, but they had to leave before they could go in and pack it up. Oh, also there seems to be a. Sabat pack moving into the city. Uh, are you familiar with the unholy rollers? That doesn't ring a bell. Is that a? I, uh, he, it's I think that, that the, uh, might be a game. roller derby team. There's a biker gang called the Unholy Rollers been looking for land to buy on the uh, southeast side and selling crystal. So, something is on its way. Can I say something as Blake? Because Archibald doesn't know about it. Metagaming! Metagaming. Should we be more concerned that there are a bunch of humans like tracking our location right now? Um, the premier hideout of this like poor guy that we don't know, but this is really like on Excavo to take action. And I don't know what Excavo in character would do, but like I and I'm new to this game. If you under- if you're too careful, things. if you're too careful, the game will be so boring. But my understanding is like masquerade is like this super important thing that like all mm-hmm. of the players are very in on. Uh, well, and, and it also yeah, seems like Excavo's yeah, that we have to on. right? So right. I know that when this phone is off, it can't be tracked. I am also going <clears throat> to... Okay, so you have a way around it, okay. So by turning it off, they're not tracking me anymore. I forgot to turn it off when we were here because I was freaked out by the uh, car crash and all that. There's an angry cop knock at the door. Pum, 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 pum. Uh, in actuality, I'm oh, not yeah, going to answer the door. Regent, it, would, it would not be for me to answer the door. Regent Lane sort of like tilts his head back a little bit and stares into the middle distance, and says, <laughs> "and says there's a there's a very angry looking young woman. She appears drunk, and she's pounding nope. on the door, and she." is wearing one high heel. Do any of you know her? <laughs> and then, oh, and then, he, then he snaps out of it. Uh, wrong house. Seems like my type, but I don't think so. Boom, 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 boom. Is this, is this your suggestion that one of us should answer the door, friend? You need to get that? Because I'll do oh. it. <laughs> Leslie, it's your place. I mean... I just, I just casually like. Assume, no, Leslie should answer the door. I assume Why is that Leslie is the You hear, you hear a, you hear another door in the house creak open, and there's, there's, uh, heavy footsteps, and that, and that, yes, oh, man, that seven foot tall. What room are we in? Creepy creature. You were in the the parlor. We're in the parlor. And walking okay. through the foyer, sort of dragging herself up to the door. So I, I wipe my fingerprints off this phone, right? If I have any. <laughs> Do vampires have fingerprints? Yeah. Yeah, you still have fingerprints. Oh, okay. okay. So fingerprints off the phone. And um, I... Uh, Walk it slowly walking up to the entrance is that is that tall creature. Um, I want to throw it out the window. <laughs> Do you do that? In the parlor. What, what what window? Okay, do the windows face the front door in the parlor? Um, there are windows facing the side and the front. Okay, so I go to a window that faces the side, right? Um, it's a nice day. Cracked window open. 
Um, what's out there? Better hope it's not day. It's totally nighttime, right? Is it still nighttime? <laughs> it's a nice thing. <laughs> it's always nighttime when we would die. <laughs> Is it nighttime? Yes, it's always. Yeah. I mean, like Vampire Day is night. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're gonna make that verbal mistake. That's canon now. <laughs> vampire Day. <laughs> So you toss it's it out? Middle of the vampire day. Um, can I toss it over the fence of the next house? Actually, um, there are no nearby neighbors. There, uh, The yards are really, really wide. So they're... Um, oh, God. So there's nowhere to throw. <laughs> which was part of why location tracking makes it really obvious which house the phone is in. So you'll just be throwing it into the yard, unfortunately. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> the the uh, creature, the creature's almost... So I take out almost, the SIM oh, card? Okay. I take out the, the, the SIM card on the phone, because, yeah, you just need a paper clip. And you take out the SIM card. Yeah, you're probably uh, very practiced doing that. You could pop it right out. Yeah, oh, totally. Destroy the SIM card. Like, I've gone through burner phones many <laughs> times. Now it's property destruction. <laughs> I mean, they can't know that this is that phone. <clears throat> Just be like, this isn't her phone. Okay. I do. Uh... Okay, so the door opens. And. <laughs> in my pocket. No one can see it. <laughs> and that, that woman from the bar is, is at the front door. And oh, there's a car running. Close. There's a car running at the uh, at the street, and her boyfriend is in the driver's seat. She's standing at the at the door, being like, "Where's my phone, skank? Why do you have my phone?" And she's totally looking looking past the creature that opened the door, like just totally ignoring. Like obviously, this isn't the person. I'm not even paying attention to this weird sweatshirt, sweatpants, matching color person. This is probably her mom or something. Where's my phone? Is Where's my phone? Uh, this one's on you. <laughs> did you? Did you, did you steal oh. this lady's phone? C'est moi? The woman, gave us new phones. The woman Get stomps the phone into back. the chantry. Let's get the phone back. She just stomps wow. in the chantry and then it, and then it, is it is standing in the foyer and just kind of like looking around. The door to the parlor is is closed. Pourquoi? Where's my phone? I know my phone's in here somewhere. Where's my phone, you skank? Why do you have it, my phone? It, it, She's stomping around. I'm gonna get my boyfriend to come in here. Where's my phone? Oh. I'm gonna call the cops. Where's my phone? Hey. She she hears she hears fun. the guys in the parlor, parlor and she opens the door. They are. Where's my phone? My boyfriend's what? my boyfriend's in the car. He plays football. Tu parles France? I know you speak English. You you said something to me at the bar. I don't know what it was, but I don't know why I have my phone. Where's my phone? Just give me my phone. I'll get out of here. I don't speak Arabic or whatever, okay? I'm not like that, okay? Just give her a phone. Give her a phone. Give her a phone. She's in full tantrum mode. Uh, Regent Lane. Regent Lane uh, puts a puts a puts a hand on your shoulder, Excavel, and says, "May I take care of this for you?" Uh, yeah, we. Oui. Um, also, I can I can show you how we use our servants here, um, and how our feeding territory works. He motions to the the seven foot tall creature, and says. Wait, what about the cop that's here? There's no cop. It's her voice. I thought there was a cop. Oh, because I said because I said cop knock. You get a cop knock. Oh no, that's oh. just the. Boom, 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 boom. I, I was confused before. Yeah. No, I just. I, then never mind. I just call that a cop knock when people knock with like their fist like mm-hmm. that. 
uh, Regent Lane motions to the creature and says, uh, this one uh, is food. Send her to the back. And the creature uh, stands... Um, okay. The creature stands up straight and goes, Hi, I'm Batman! Oh, check this out! The Riddler is in the alley causing ruckus with his puzzles! You're... You're... You're back, girl, and you need to help me with this caper. Come on, back to the alley. We'll have an adventure. Let's go. And starts walking out the door. And, and the girl from the bar starts to like relax and is like, okay, yeah, let's do that. And as soon as they get outside, the creature sees the the boyfriend in the car. I don't and, see. And the guy, the guy that uh, looks looks out the car and goes, "Babe, did you get your phone? What's going on? Who's that weird dude? What? What's taking you so long?" Uh, monsieur, Monsieur, uh, allez avec le mad- uh, mademoiselle. Who's that chick and why is she talking German? I don't talk crowd. Did she give you her phone yet? Babe. Monsieur, ici. Babe, I don't have a lot of time. Let's get this going. And the the, ah, oui, the really oui. tall creature sort of bounds down the sidewalk and goes up to the car. And you hear her say, Hey, I'm Batman. You're Robin. And... Poison Ivy's in the alley and is all the plants are sending the property values down. We gotta go beat her up and uh, get all me to it or something. I don't know, but it's in the alley. You gotta go back there with us. So saddle up, buckaroo. And you see the guy in the car go, oh. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll do that. And he turns the car off and he really slowly gets out. And now the two of them hypnotized are following the creature along the sidewalk around the block and back to the alley. And Point of order, what kind of car is it? It is a Pontiac Thunderbird. Dope. <laughs> and Regent Lane says, uh, well, uh, let's join them in the backyard. And he leads you through the foyer, through the door on the left, through a kitchen, uh, through the kitchen to the backyard. The backyard is a large central area that's paved with marble stones. The perimeter of it is uh, grass. It's, uh, they have an actual lawn. It has a bunch of raised beds with the Tremere, uh, growing plants, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a two-car garage off in the corner. There's a big, tall privacy fence uh, all around it. In the very back of the backyard, there is a door in the privacy fence and Regent Lane walks up and unlatches that door. And after a couple minutes, uh, the tall creature walks up and is like, there you go, we, we got these. Oh, look, look, we, we beat up all, all the people. Oh no, the, the penguin is in this backyard doing, I forget what the, what the penguin did. He, he stole from banks, but he was a he was a rich guy to begin. I honestly don't remember what his whole deal was as as a villain. Go in the fucking backyard, and then they go. <laughs> they both go okay, and they both walk into the backyard. And the thing goes. That's a good Robin and, and Bat Bat girl or woman. Bow woman, that's more, that's more empowering. Ah, uh, he is so woke. <laughs> and <laughs> Regent Lane says, you may give this person her phone back if you wish, uh, but I, I think whoever's hungry uh, may now feed. 
Ah, yes. <laughs> However, Excavo, you oh, no. are hungry. I am. Specifically, I looked up the mechanics for this. Um, you are, uh, everyone is at risk if their blood pool, if it's at seven minus self-control or lower, then you are considered hungry and susceptible to hunger frenzy and stuff. That means if you, uh, there's a trigger, if you see blood, also when you are feeding, you have to roll self-control to find out if you lose control and completely drain uh, the vessel. So since, I, 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 since your current blood pool is three, yep. um, when you feed from this vessel, you will have to roll your self-control, which have, is three. Yeah, and if you, three. if you happen to fail, then you will frenzy and try to completely drain the person. And your friends will have the option to overpower you and stop you from killing the person or not. So do you now feed from one or more of these captive yes. hypnotized mortals? Yes. I go for her first. <laughs> okay. She's like, I I, I'm Batwoman. Why am I in this backyard? Fighting? I go to her. I say, adieu. <laughs> And then I roll three d10. First roll. <gasps> uh oh. Oh, that's that a, a bad roll. Is that a botch? That's a bad yeah. Roll. Oh boy. So wow. so what happens is uh, Excavo, super hungry, is like, is like, and is hungry. Instead of giving you your phone, uh, I'm gonna start <coughs> very carefully. Drinking some of your blood, and she latches on and and starts attempting to drain as much of her blood as possible. A vampire can drain a maximum of three blood points per turn. So in this first turn, Excavo gets three blood points. Mm -hmm. And it is immediately obvious due to the the violence of the the overwhelming fail on the roll. I'm a fucking. I'm gonna just do this patiently. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's it's obvious to Augustine, Darby, and Archibald that uh, Excavo is uh, is frenzying and. Uh, I am gonna move to intervene. This would really offend my humanity, and I, I would be like, "Oh, come, on, come on, I'll leave. Oh, yeah. I'm, I am. I am trying to separate that. If Excavo drains another three blood points from this vessel, that'll be enough to make her pass out and need hospitalization. Do I roll again? I think um, if I burn for celerity, is that my only chance? Like, do I have? Um, you uh, no, Excavo. You don't uh, roll again at this point. Uh, what what does everyone else uh, wish to do? Let me see how it works out with Darby, and then <laughs> take a course of action depending on that. I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no. uh, as as I see Darby intervening, I'm so I, s- I slide him one of my two tontos. I'm just kind of casually like, like um, being like, um, uh, Augusta, like, what is your deal? <laughs> Oh my God, don't kill me. Moving, like a big cumbersome piece yeah. of furniture and two people have a good handhold on it and you want to help. <laughs> Next but, like, thing you always pull out a kind of grab it in the middle and you're not really helping at all. <laughs> you're like, you're supervising. Oh my God. So yeah, I, I take the Tonto and I stab Excavo as hard as I can. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can someone like just like smack? Me? I am mean, trying to. I am actively trying to separate. You, you, can, you can use the blunt end of the the I hilt. Feel like Darby's stronger than I. You I can feel like he can pull us apart. Darby, yeah, you can roll strength plus brawl to uh, to hold Excavo in a mobilizer. I'm still. <laughs> Holy shit! That's a lot of guys. <laughs> wow. 
How many dice was that? It wasn't a great Ten. roll. Ten. Uh, two successes, though. Uh, One botch. Uh, well, how many? Two, two aggregate successes. So what that means is the way the hold mechanics work is you've successfully immobilized her. She is still in frenzy. In her next turn, she can also roll strength plus brawl to break out. Is she still linked to the... Is she still locked on, like chomped on the person? I I think the presumption is uh, your role was to grab her away from... From the That's vessel and to, and to separate. All right. What so, would I roll? But she's still in frenzy. Because it, it like, makes. I'm strangled, but I'm still like. <sighs> yeah, nothing you did ended the frenzy. And it doesn't make sense to me that you held both of them together. No, no. Yeah. No, I was grabbing her. Or that oh, you would have grabbed okay. her and them remaining okay. attached. So, yeah. So, I, what do I roll to get out of the hold? Um, in the next turn, it'll be an opposed roll. Both of you rolling strength plus brawl. I my strength plus brawl is two dice. Yeah, I think I would just overpower so, without any contest whatsoever. I have ten dice for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I know that I'm physically smaller than him. So, so Actually, I can burn. I can burn one. I could spend my potence point to win automatically, but I don't even know why I need to do that. Like I feel like I'm just much stronger than you. How do we get me out of frenzy? Uh, botching a self-control role means the character remains in frenzy until the storyteller decides otherwise. Oh gosh. Huh. Okay. I, I guess, guess it's going to be the whole campaign then, huh? I guess that's a you thing then. Frenzy <laughs> forever. Excavo is still in frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me narrate what's going on with, with the mortals. Um, so, uh, Bar, <laughs> Bar Skank collapses to the ground and is very confused, uh, has blood pouring out of her neck. Uh, Excavo did not have the, uh, the wherewithal to, to, to lick the wound closed because she was in frenzy and she was just feeding. Um, uh, her boyfriend is... He's got to lick her wounds. Her boyfriend is starting to come to because he's starting to think maybe he's not Robin and this doesn't appear to be a normal Batman adventure oh, that God. he's on. Excavo and, and Darby can make their first contested uh, strength plus brawl roll. Um, okay. Which we're not going to do endlessly, but let's just do one and I mean, just to see if the completely we'll unexpected would happen. happen. One success out of two. I actually botched three times, which is kind of amazing, but I still but had, had two successes. Wait, so yeah, I still overall two. two successes versus my one. So Wait, that yeah. was really close? It was actually pretty close. I botched, I botched three times, despite yeah, my five successes. Three ones. Wow. So yeah. Escavo is, is doing really good and almost getting out of Darby's uh, grasp. It's honestly incredible. It, it I'm, hurts just, your like, I'm, I'm well. just like thrashing, right? It's like... Uh, <laughs> Archibald and Augustine, are either of you doing anything? Augustine, yeah, so I would love to take an action. I would love to uh, lick this well, poor girl's wounds. Uh, good call. Close. I was hoping someone would be thoughtful enough to do that. So I, uh, I, I do it like I, I kind of like dip my fingers into the gush and like sample it. And I'm like, hmm, not too bad. And then I like <laughs> get in there and like lick it closed. I like take a nice pull of it and then I'm like, gush. He said, Graham. He said, gush. It's fine. A gusher. As Archibald approaches the wound, I, I had previously like reached down to do so and saw he was going to do it. And, it was just and then we like, accidentally open mouth kiss. I, I, I really like, oh, 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 oh my bad, my bad. Just, like, Did you two like Lady in the Tramp with her blood? Yeah, I was just envisioning her. I, I, I awkwardly backstep and let Archibald do his thing. And then I step back after I, I do my thing. I'm like, by all means, dude. 
Go ahead. <laughs> no, I insist. <laughs> and we go back and forth and like this for the rest of the encounter. Yeah, you have to roll uh, an opposing politeness check. I'm now trying to think of like a bad pun. Like I don't want to bite the the dude, the other guy, and like make some bad like Robin pun. Sorry about this dick. <laughs> he, he looks down at, the, at his girlfriend on the ground and the two of you, and he still seems kind of dazed and confused. He says, Let's go. Hey, hey, that's my chick, bros. What's going on? And is my girlfriend Batwoman? What's. What? Where where's this backyard? I'm confused. What is everyone doing? Is anyone doing anything about him? <laughs> I am otherwise occupied. It, if I like bite him, will he like stop being lucid? Um, yeah. yeah. the The effects of what in Vampire Masquerade uh, oh, is the called one. the kiss. Uh, when vampire fangs go into to someone, it's uh, I hate to use this analogy, but it's it's kind of like roofing uh, a human. Okay. It's it doesn't. Uh, well, this is love potion, right? Yeah, it effectively drugs them. It doesn't erase their memory or, or anything uh, extreme like that. But it it makes their head really fuzzy. It makes it difficult for them to clearly form memories. It makes it difficult for them to to. Uh, like fight back. Rufy is a really gross analogy to use, but it's uh, the clearest analogy that I can think of. Um, oh, I was so, a potion. <laughs> so if you if you did bite into him, he would basically like everything would be fuzzy. He he wouldn't have a clear memory of exactly what happened. That's why. Like all over the world, there are vampires biting people, and like no one really clearly remembers that. Like, yeah, a guy okay. bit me and drank my blood. He's also not mentioning the immediate orgasmic pleasure, like way better That's than an orgasm for a oh, human. Yeah. It's like an overwhelmingly pleasurable experience for them. I feel like that would be right. a memorable experience, though. I'm super glad that I'm asking this question, having not known. I think it'll be good for maybe the audience at home too, but. Um, that is good because this whole time I assumed that everybody we like drank from was just dead, and I was like, "How do they not notice that something's going on?" <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. I thought so too. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for being with me on that. No, it's not described in a lot of detail in Vampire the Masquerade, but it's it's kind of vaguely described as people's memory of being fed on is just like. Uh, yeah, I was going through an alley, and then when I came out of it, I had this sort of vague memory of like uh, some guy ran up to me, and I don't know, he must have like said something to me, or like ran up uh, against me, or something like that, and I felt like real funny or something, but I don't really remember what happened, but like I felt off or good or something, and there are probably uh, a lot of people who are like, yeah, I was in a bar and. I don't know, a guy like came up to me and I think he kissed me or something and, I, and it felt really good and I must never, ever tell anyone that that happened because a guy did something to my neck and it felt really good and I feel a deep shame about that. I would I would tell everyone <laughs> that that happened to me at the bar. Well, the therapist is um, probably aware. But anyway, so that being said, now that we've got the whole backstory ready, <laughs> I do go up to him. I put a hand on the shoulder uh, as he's looking scared and dazed and confused. And I kind of say, <laughs> sorry about this, Dick. And then I I bite him and do the thing, too. And, <laughs> and then I, like... Would, would he go back, into a frenzy? And I look back at, like, oh, everyone already occupied not at all listening to me and I'm like, and I'm like get it like dick grayson like like robin get it oh mm -hmm. i did not get it not because he's like a, a dick but because that's the name you know in the batman comics his the uh, robin's yeah, name dick grayson. Dick grayson. 
He do, goes, I need to, do I need to make a check for whether I can hold the grip with how terrible that was? Like, just like, am I going to let go? <laughs> are you going to like, try? Are you going to let go of me because of a bad pun? How much blood do I have in my blood pool now? I just like got a lot. You have double dips. Oh, uh, how many blood points uh, do you pull from this guy? I don't know. You tell me. Three, how does that work? Three is, uh, I believe, standard and safe. All right. Do you happen to know like how many I had to begin with? You currently have six. Okay, I had six. So I'll take three. Yeah, that works for me. Cool. He goes, I'm glad you explained the joke, bro. It's a good one. Up yeah, nothing personal, man. Up, up top, and his hand collapses before he could complete the high five. Uh, I hold up his like limp arm and do high five him as a courtesy. <laughs> he goes, no homo. Uh. <laughs> like, and then I, I, I do pull him up and look into his like loosening lucidity eyes. And I do say like absolute homo, my friend. <laughs> 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 He goes, fuck. <laughs> and I, then I say, we'll get to that. He goes, don't tell my secret boyfriend I cheated on him. <laughs> I won't. I won't. <laughs> back, back to the way more tense that you Yeah, I love that Chavo role playing. That's great. <clears throat> so... After my favorite part of this is occasionally Kimber's webcam freezes and I just get oh, her yeah. like and frozen. It's in the middle of a thrash. It's been nailing it. So it's after been about down. after about a minute, Excavo gets tuckered out and her frenzy subsides. <laughs> and Barskank and Bro Dude kind of groggy come to their feet and they're like, Okay, what happened? We're so confused. And the the tall, mysterious creature goes, Hey, what are you guys doing? Where the... You watered in this backyard for no fucking reason. You need to go go home. Get out of here. This is trespassing, you dingus. Go, get going out. Get. Get. And you can't... You didn't... Nothing, nothing happened back here. You wandered back here. For no reason, because you're idiots, and nothing happened. That's that. Go. And both of them seem, they have that same sort of weird, relaxed posture where they're just kind of staring into her eyes, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're dumb. Nothing happened. And the boyfriend goes, yeah, why did I come back here? Nothing happened. We should go back to the car, babe. And they wander back out into the alley and they walk off. And Regent Lane says, oh, okay. So that seems resolved. Did that woman ever get her phone back? Seems like no. What phone? <laughs> the card never, never returned it. She doesn't need it. It's fine. Okay. Senseless crime. Just the whole this, just for no reason. As long as there are absolutely no loose threads. Well, uh, back into the the chantry. Yeah. It Sounds seem great. like I, I I mentioned that I have uh, special proclivities, uh, so um, I am a little thirsty, but I'm gonna have to go see to my own needs. If you don't mind. Uh, you you wish to to hunt. Oh yeah, where are the meth parts of town? I was very interested in that myself. The asking for you, Dad. Oh no, no, Excavo's all all tuckered out. You got that out of your system. I have released you. Not allowed to be hungry. You got hangry. I hand you a Snickers. You have a Snickers and you didn't like, tell me? With blood in it or whatever <laughs> you do. Blood Snickers. <laughs> oh my god. It's like speaking into my brain. <laughs> that. that was Just not my okay. microphone's over there. 
You are not allowed to just do that casually. <laughs> what? Was it loud? <laughs> uh, Regent Lane walks back into uh, the Chantry and uh, walks back into the parlor where you had been. Hey, Leslie. We go into the parlor, too. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for the hospitality, man. I think, uh, you know, we got your contact info. I think we're going to head into the sewers, see about some, uh, you know, ugly motherfuckers. <laughs> no fraud to bastards. Uh, see what happened with those guys and investigate what, what's up with the sheriff. There is one more thing that I'd like your advice on. Whatever is title glass, like the, the big dog who brought us all here for whatever. Yeah, he's expecting to take Randy tomorrow. Could we maybe uh, pick your brain about uh, yeah, what, what do we, we say? do with that? Because our suspicions were that they were probably just going to kill him anyway. So maybe it's like a promotion idea. Maybe they'll be glad we got that out of the way. Um, but, but you know it better than we do. So, like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, was Lord Delacroix going to leave tonight? Was someone going to pick him up tonight? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Did they were going to take him in a big gun safe? Ooh, what if we put the ashes in there, guys? Then technically he is going. I like it in in a safe. So no one no one could open the safe. Presumably. Why not just why not just close the safe and That's kind of what I was thinking. But you know, I did want to leave the ashes in there maybe just because you know, we didn't know Randy uh, Lord Delacroix super well, but it yeah. would be nice if he did make it to the Middle East. That seemed like a real passion of his. It, it is true that if <laughs> if you collected his ashes and if they were in the safe, then you, yep. if, if you were asked if he were in the safe, you would not need to lie. And honesty is the best policy. So... Very uh, premier advice of you. So, uh, yes, uh, if you could possibly collect his remains, then yes. Oh, oh no. So Jade, his, his ghoul, does not know about what happened yet. No. Yeah, we were going to let her know as soon as we got back there. Oh, she is, she is going to be devastated. Do you intend to keep Jade, to, to take care of her, to keep her as oh, a yeah. servant? No doubt. Yeah, Jade's great. I makes, a, makes a wonderful gin and tonic. Okay. I suspect she will be devastated, as much as that might matter to, to any of you. So it is your intention to try to find any remaining Nosferatu that might still exist in the city? Seems like as good a goal as any. Seems like there's a lot of action down in the sewers. May I see the note that Sheriff Bagger left you? Yeah, sure. I don't know who's got the actual physical copy of it, but we handed it over. Uh, Darby had it. I, I I thought that earlier you were you were looking physically looking at it. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, I hand it over. Here you go, boss. Well, this appears to have instructions. Got to get over to Nukertech. Specifically, how to get to? Are are you trying to get to the surveillance room or just exploring in general underground? Uh, I feel the surveillance room like priority. A pretty good place to go. Scavo wants to go there. We got we got an agenda to accomplish there, and then you know, uh, seems like that was no Feratu territory, so we could explore around there once we find it or use their surveillance room to surveillance some stuff once we uh, locate that. We'll probably also want to arm up because there is that Gould Gator Wally. And I bet that's going to attack us when we go into the sewer. If there are still any Nosferatu, I, I would be concerned about 
But normally, non Nosferatu do not go into Nosferatu warrens. They generally do not allow outsiders without invitations, and they're considered dangerous places for outsiders to, to go. If the Nosferatu have, in fact, all vacated, which appears to be what this note is implying, then it should be safe for you. If the Nosferatu have have ghouled animals and have kept ghouled animals down there, those could prove problematic. Of course, ghouled animals require upkeep, and if the Nosferatu had been gone for very long, then there wouldn't be anyone still there to to be performing that upkeep, so I wouldn't expect so, there to be any problem. What kind of animals are we talking about? Uh, well, the kinds of animals that you normally find in a sewer. Uh, now, a, a, an alligator in this part of the country is unusual, but apparently they, they found one and kept it as a pet. Uh, but as we see in the notes, they couldn't bring it with them, and they expect that it's, it's dead by now. But uh, traditionally... Uh, rats and also insects the the Nosferatu would ghoul. Um, you ask me, it's a Chekhov's gator. Ah, yes. Uh, as in a Chekhov's gun? Ah, uh, man of culture. I appreciate you. Yes, I I would go prepared for for danger. Yeah, you got anything to help us out with that? Chief? Oh, to prepare you for battle? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're, you're fearless leaders here. We might need to assess what specific dangers you might face. Uh, if you are concerned about frightening things in the sewers, uh, there is a, a service, actually, that our harpy, uh, DJ Ray Ray, as he insists on being called, uh, a service that he has, has performed, even for some of us Tremere, um, you might inquire with him uh, something that he does with his music that can steal the nerves. H- have, you, have you met uh, Mr. Mr. Lamprey? Uh, we heard him. We oh, didn't his, have his much music. time to talk. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, in the middle of a set. So he was like a bard. Mr. Ray Ray was stated as, and I quote, the fuck are you doing? I'm in the middle of a set. And, uh, you know, <laughs> some sage-ass wisdom right there. You know, Ray Ray for life. Wait, while we're while we're summarizing all of the plot threads of this journey, Augustine, you also met that that one lady about the talked about the farm, right? I did, I did, and I you still have a sticky note about That's it. That's something we could also check out at some point. Oh goodness, what was her name? I have a st- Feather McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a name, dude! Is she this hangs out with a mousetrap for sure? Is this something that you you say out loud? Mm-mm. No, okay. that was no, all. No, no, this is, this is, this is, doesn't know about that. This is meta conversation. Meta um, uh, Regent Lane says, uh, "Well, unfortunately, I I do need to return to my studies, and I I need to leave you to whatever your your work will be. But um, before I do, uh, I almost uh, forgot to ask." Um, which one of you do I have the honor of calling my new prince? Um, that's I think we all just know. Know. look at that's each other. A great uh, cliffhanger to leave the episode on, if you ask me. Look at that great question right there. Uh, we don't know. Randy never told us, though. I throw my hand up while everyone's deliberating. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I just, hey. without question, volunteer. Hey. I say, hey, 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 everybody. Well, Dig this. <laughs> what about... Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the works of Peter Kropotkin or uh, Bakunin, uh, the great anarchists of Russia, but what if we didn't have a hierarchy? What if there were no leaders? 
Four princes? My hand no, gradually... No princes, no princes, no gods, no <laughs> masters. My oh, hand no, gradually, there like, There has to be the top. There has to be talking. number one. I'd be willing to share it, but <clears throat> not get rid of it entirely. I don't want to be any of the prince. I don't want to be a fourth of a prince. I don't want to be half a prince. I don't want to be two princes. I hate that song. See, Darby, so, hear me out here. Okay. What about mm -hmm. there's no princes? Reason. We can do mm, what we want. Self determination. I and just, we, I just good. quietly gesture at both Darby and Excavo, and then I point at myself and I re-raise my hand. Regent Lane beckons Augustine over to him to to have a little private discussion with him. All of us are like not suddenly listening in. I kind of like lean over. I'm like, if he's it, we're just going to consider that like a, a vanguard party. But after we transition, you know, it, it's all what I was saying. He says to Augustine, I am not in the position to decide anything, but I have an opinion. And it has never been my belief that a Tremere should lead in such a capacity. Our talents are best utilized solving problems for princes rather than being princes. I have always felt very strongly that sitting in meetings and playing politics get in the way of our studies and that it is a waste of our talents to be bureaucrats and politicians. It is my advice to you and all of my clanmates not to take political positions such as Prince, but rather to ingratiate ourselves with those who do seek such sometimes rather hollow positions right. of apparent po power. So I, I, I see where you're coming from. So... And I kind of just start gesturing between Darby and Archibald. Just <laughs> casually Archibald. alternating points Archibald. between them. Archibald. I am probably doing something embarrassing at this time. I don't know, like <laughs> fiddling with something on the wall, like dropping something like full Jar Jar Binks level. Uh, I'm literally, so I'm just like consulting the, the conquest of bread, trying to figure out this whole political theory situation as a as a french person i'm not necessarily delighted at the thought of monarchy but <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm talking about sister let's break out the guillotines we already <laughs> we already kind of yeah. killed one prince why not just let so all the, but all I mean, the while there needs to be somebody who so, is so able to to Mr. Lane, I am still just like raising eyebrows and gesturing at two people and like winking unnecessarily and waiting for him to say something like, so yeah, them, them? Hmm? Well, Sir Darby seems to not want the position at all. And Sir Archibald seems to reject the very idea that our whole Camarilla hierarchical power structure is founded on, it, he would seem to be more at home with uh, the Anarch movement, which is mm. a bit troubling. Leans a little I'm bit really, to the I'm left really and wants to Excavo. Whole... What did uh, Archibald say? I mean, it's our, uh, I'm a brew hot. It's kind of uh, what we're all about, you know? Well, perhaps Archibald could set aside some of his more politically destructive ideas for a year for the sake of bringing order and structure to a city that desperately needs it. I don't know if he could. <laughs> Wait. Le leans a little bit to the side, revealing Excavo over my shoulder and just starts pointing and grinning maniacally. I look up in the sky and I'm just kind of like, like Comrade Lenin. Yeah, so I think we got a winner. 
You know, there's a different way of looking at those who have the a role of being in charge, not a, a hierarchical one where you're more important and your decisions, um, that you're a, a more important with a person with more weight. Just you, there's a different way of looking at it that you have the job of organizing things on behalf of other people and having their concerns and their needs in mind. You have the responsibility of doing the management stuff for the city on behalf of everyone else because... Working behind the scenes. Organization. I know that very well. Wait a minute. Organization. Management. What I'm saying is there's... There's an, you can count me in. There's an ugly, cynical way to look at hierarchical organization, and there's a more practical, fair way to look at hierarchical organization. You can say, you can reject the hierarchy and say, no, 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 this is unfair and this is bad because the people at the top, they're not better than us. And that's, that's, not, that's not fair. That's, that's not fair. That's not how the cam really does, does things. No, I no, don't no. do this in the name of leadership. Someone, but in the name of local community organization, I will rise to the occasion. Someone needs to because there are some people at the, at the bottom that need to do small-scale bottom things. And there are some people well, at the top. Uh, right. Maybe we'll figure out a more lateral terminology than than bottom but what, yeah we can talk about that later some yeah. people need to do large scale far-reaching things far-reaching things but perhaps someone more articulate can can articulate so there's, there's i'm small, articulate there's I, small picture day to day and then there's large picture Five years, ten years. I've never had to explain the core concepts of what the Camarilla has taken for granted for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, I understand. But as Blake, super great for those folks at home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, as as Graham, trying to trying to explain uh, like right wing politics. <laughs> Okay, I think Archibald is sold. I think I think you, we have convinced him to do it. If that is everybody's concern, I, I was wondering if it would eventually well, fall to Darby to, to be Prince. I, I was I was like not opposed to letting it happen on accident, but I'm glad to see that Archibald has assumed the mantle of leadership. But clearly, I'm very much of the key that uh, of like the idea that we are all equal, and in like in my own head. I am cre we are doing an egalitarian anarchist society, but that is in fact not actually the case, but he does not see that. I feel like he wants the position to tear things down from the inside. Yeah, that's ooh, sold. I don't feel like he would be <laughs> okay, a great guys, here's back the to goal. Back back to be where this goes. The way it is. Down, we're going to bring down the Camarilla. With you, get, you guys are talking about all this crazy political nonsense, and this whole time I'm just like glancing around the room to see what plants I can scratch the surface of to, you know. Yikes. I don't feel like he would be a good fit. I think I would be a better fit. He's, he's, you're contesting his, his claim to the, to the throne. Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, I mean, I'm biased. You're biased, so I guess everybody else will have to talk about that. But also, again, just floating it. Like, what if there were no leaders? No gods, no masters? No gods, no masters. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I feel like he's trying to get the position to bring things down from the inside. Well, not to bring down, like, everything... Like Scavo, what are you going to do if, if you are democratically, vampirically elected supreme leader of this? Yeah, what are these uh, I mean, as supreme prince, I would, I would develop a task force to investigate what is happening underground first. I would not just send all of our most important 
because uh, it may be yeah, more like suited. Five. It may be more suited for others who have other strengths, and I know that I may not be the best person to go down there. Um, so there's like five people. And all so also, to go down there to all the also trying to get in contact with Mr. Uh, Bagger and Harvey, and um, learning more about the city. And then looking for ways to actually improve instead of doing what Mr. Delacroix has been doing for the last year, unfortunately, from what I understand. Archibald, what's your shtick? Give us your spit. Let's go. All of those things, but instead of her doing them, we are doing them, you know, as a collective. And there are four of us. If we were to have two versus two on decisions, how would those ties be broken? Really Darby, four of us. Darby, if you were given this opportunity, how would you? How would you deal with things? I, I just want to say again, I, I do want not them. want to do this at all. He does not uh, want the job. I don't. I don't want to be the prince. I really like it when other people are telling me what it is I should be doing. And then I can just disappoint them at that time rather than disappointing everyone right from the start. So I would prefer not to be the prince. What other jobs are available? May I say another thing? No. Okay. The voting is now. <laughs> but, like, if I wasn't the prince, what, could I? could I be, like, the... I don't know the the Joker. What else? What else do they got? Uh, the Rook. Is there like a, a right hand <laughs> prince. Is there a security management position of some sort? Regent Lane says the the right hand of the prince is the Seneschal. Okay, I'm left handed. What else you got? <laughs> the sheriff is a political position. Since the sheriff has left, you could replace the sheriff. I was asking what the different jobs were. Oh, uh, the the seneschal is uh, essentially a, a vice prince. Uh, uh, usually, the, the people that when when there is a seneschal in the city, that is the the person that people would normally interface with directly instead of going directly to the prince with their problems. A COO. Um, the. Uh, the sheriff is the head of law enforcement in a city. Uh, sometimes cities have a position called a scourge that is responsible for going around and destroying vampires that were created without permission. Uh, the harpy, which is uh, uh, Jeffrey Lamprey in this city, <clears throat> sort of the, uh, the manager of social matters. Uh, the harpy... Um, keeps track of everyone's social status and records boons. Uh, the Keeper of Elysium, which is myself in this city at the moment, sees to everyone's safety and uh, the decorum in any building that is declared Elysium and used as Elysium. So we need to find a prince, a seneschal, seneschal, a uh, sheriff, and that's it. All of these are traditional positions, but they're not mandatory positions. Um, Prince is, I would think, the only mandatory position to to have. It is. It would be chaos to go into a city and not know who is in charge. In in my opinion, in a Camarilla city. Mm-hmm. I agree. You can kind of improvise your way around the other positions uh, being missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how is the prince usually chosen? Because this doesn't seem like a very good system that we're going through right now yeah. of a bunch of people just pointing at each other. Well, oftentimes, I'm still pointing at oftentimes if there's a vacancy and there isn't... Um, in that area already a tradition of succession of a prince choosing their own successor uh the 
uh, Primogen Council made up of the eldest of each of the clans uh, would all collectively vote on who they would wish to uh, to be the next prince. Does that exist here? When Lord Delacroix was chosen to be prince, he succeeded his uh, his sire, who was the previous prince. There is not a, a Primogen Council, uh, not a, a functioning one uh, that has, has existed recently. Uh, you could always convene a voting body of all of the, the, the kindred in the city and have everyone vote. I mean, you could vote amongst yourselves. You are the four who are who have been like given. We're, pra- we're practically all of the kindred in the city anyway. I mean, yeah, this may be all we have. I'm I'm running with my guy Baldy over here. So uh, he's, got, he's got style. He's got he's got uh, you know uh, uh, the haircut that I'm after. And honestly, I think I think he's going to make Prince material. Here, here's my final statement in this uh, weird impromptu election: <laughs> is that I never sought this position, nor do I think this position should exist. <laughs> but. What I work for and what I represent is the will of the people. And if the people, which is just the five of us, we are all the people, uh, choose for that to happen, then so be it. Regent I don't Lane. want this for me. I want this for us. Regent Lane says, is that resolved then? I tap twice on the nearest horizontal surface, just in approval. So say or who? Oh, did Augustine just switch sides? You switch sides? I thought it was going to be like a tense voting situation. Yeah, I thought it was split. Uh, it was so inspirational. I oh was just God. swayed. Archibald convinced Out him. Out of character, Andy, th- you're making a huge mistake. Andy, no! <laughs> Andy, you're making no, a pick huge me. mistake. Pick uh, me. It's too late. It's too late. He wants Holly to tear wins. things down. He's not going to be focusing on making the city better. I don't want to. Hey, community organization. At the all right. Level, well, now we got a prince. So you should pick. You should pick your vice vice prince. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna be your 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 second in command? <laughs> well. <sighs> so, Excavo, you're it. You can be it. Are the are the votes not still? 50, no, 50? we're still split. Nobody's made a decision right. one way or the other. I don't think that's vote? true. Should we I vote? Think, I think that it is Augustine, Darby, and Archibald in favor of Archibald for Prince. And he has chosen ex Cabo as his seneschal. Augustine. And, and Darby, you are the sheriff. I, wa- I would have chosen you for the second position, no, but I think you'd make the better chair. What are you sheriff. voting for? I voted for Archibald okay. with my two knuckle taps on the table. Okay. Wait, but who does the Tremere, who does Leslie vote for? Oh, oh he deferred to us. I, I don't believe I have any, any say in this matter. Oh, right on. Okay. Um, also, I just met all of you. Well, you are still the head <laughs> of Alicia. Um, Augustine, what job do you want? To each according to their ability, what? after all. <laughs> I, I just... I, is there a role in charge of plants? Yeah, is there like a gardener? Chief gardener? Okay, you're yeah. the, you're the ju- community gardener. We're going to get you a good plot, and that will be that. Cool. Done deal. Excavo, in addition to being... what What is the name for the vice president Sancho? again? Seneschal. The, scrim, the scrimshaw. <laughs> you will... <laughs> You're also like head of communications and like cell phones and stuff. Mm-hmm. But really, guys, like, okay, I don't want him to hear. Think of us as equals because, like, you know, we're all the same and stuff. And then I like try to hold all your hands so we can do like a spirit circle. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> we're all in this together. So, as a slightly impatient looking Regent Lane says, so a new prince has been. Elected is that is that Archibald? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Hi, we, hi, that's me. You um, just saw the democratic process at work. Nice, hey. to get made. nice to meet you again, Leslie Lane. 
Just um, a bill on Capitol Hill. Oh, excellent. Um, well, uh, I'm I'm sorry that uh, our our meeting has to be short. Uh, the next time you visit, I'll have to introduce you to the rest of our revenants. Uh, you you met but one of ours uh, tonight, and uh, the rest of the Tremere who live here. Uh, you met but but one of the three. Um, well, that would be wonderful. What was their name? What is it? Batman, in fact. Oh, they do not have names. We we do not right. name our our revenants. Um, I can actually. Right. We recently allowed the the installation of of televisions and uh, streaming applications, streaming video uh, software. They have a, uh, a a Netflix and a a Hulu now mm-hmm. to keep them entertained. We we have uh, three we have three revenants. Um, oh, which are kind of uh, rare in these modern nights. Are are we all familiar with the concept of these creatures? I'm sure the folks back home could use an explanation. Uh, sure, a refresher. That's a hard no. So could I. I also don't know what that is. Okay, so ghouls are are mortals that have been fed uh, vampiric blood. Revenants are mortals that have been fed mortal blood uh, constantly throughout their lives, over and over and over again, until that has been bred into them, into whole family lines. They're they're essentially mortals that are born with the ability to generate small trace amounts of vampiric blood in their bodies naturally. So they're they're born ghouls and they stay ghouls without needing to be fed any vampiric blood uh, by us. Unfortunately, because it requires uh, a tremendous amount of breeding and inbreeding there are quirks um but there are tremendous benefits we we control a lot about their genetics and their minds um so our clan uh keeps a a family of of these revenants and uh, we've kept this family for for quite a long time we have we have three members of the family uh you met one of them uh, we don't let them out of the house very often. Uh, we do not give them names. Uh, they have taken, as of very recently, since we, we just gave them um, exposure to television and they've, they've quickly absorbed pop culture, they've taken quite a liking to this Batman character. And uh, they have just absorbed so much about it i mm-hmm. i don't understand the intoxicating appeal but all three of oh. them <laughs> all Came three of them are absolutely enamored with this bat man and we have not named them batman but that is the name that they they keep insisting on being called so if you had an encounter with them and they, they said that that is what their name is, um, that is why. That is why they were speaking about this Batman character. Right. Well, great news. We'll be in touch with you. We had better head on back to the estate. Can we our get like our a car lift? is at the, uh, the Wonderland. <laughs> our car is toast. Oh, you can totally no, call no, for... No, 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 that's not our car. Our car is... Uh... And it's a wonderland. Oh, so our car. Go I got you. you can you can call for a lift or an Uber or a rideshare or whatever. Oh, um, yeah. Also, yeah, cool. also you could walk. It's about the same distance to walk to Club Wonderland. Uh, Darby still has the keys to a Cadillac Escalade that's parked in the Club Wonderland parking lot, and he could, right. That's what I mean. Yeah, and he could take it across uh, a bridge to Delacroix Manor. Okay. When when we're going for the lift or and or Uber, I make sure to have Excavo put in my digital stuff so I can pay for it. Your credit card? Yeah, to test and see for. 
I'm not the only one with the phone. We all have phones. Yeah, we all have phones. They just like yours I put, best. I yeah. I mean, we, I we just use do the most on it. So, are you gonna be Ubered to the burning car? No, no to, 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 to the club, club to get the Cadillac. Oh, oh okay. yeah, it's right. Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, okay. we don't need to go back there. So, uh, so you the go. The probably melted, so don't need to go back. Um, okay, so uh, so you call your your rideshare service of choice. Um, you all. Yeah, I kind of look at him like, you think I don't have money or something? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we gone? Um, yes, yeah, we, we left. were gone. Three, Wait, three, so I, oh, go ahead. So I like lean at them. I'm like immediately like, so after we deal with all the other stuff, like next on the agenda is definitely like revenant liberation. That's pretty messed up what they're doing to them. Okay, well, I was confused like, how does DiCaprio play into it? Like, they is he, have is he like related yeah. to those guys, or or <laughs> do they all have to get mauled by a bear? I don't. I, I I got lost in the middle of the explanation. I think. Yeah, right. It's pretty messed up. And then we ride away into the little not a sunset because we'd be dead. So three of you cram into the back of your ride share of choice. One of you goes into the passenger seat. Um, all of you taken. What's that? I thought we could fit four in there. In the three car? in the back, one in the front. Yeah, I go cool. back middle because that's the people's seat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all of you take. I an, sit the front. <laughs> all of you take an uneventful ride back to Club Wonderland. It's about three thirty at night at this point. Uh, Club hey. Wonderland is letting out. You find the one black Cadillac Escalade in the uh, in the parking lot. And you're let out. Uh, I guess we go back to, going back to the uh, mansion. We just drive back right. to, the, to the manor. Do you do you wish to collect? Try to collect uh, Delacroix's ashes. Um, oh, I, I, don't they, they, they already. I would want to see if his okay. cell phone melted. I, we, I, I think we did all that. We searched the car. We're we're, yeah, we're we able to find it. We got the keys. I still have and, my pocket full, so I'm good. But they did they did both say that they got ashes from the car before we left the scene originally. Yep, correct. So I think I think we just wanted to go back to the manor uh, and call it uh, a scene today. Yeah. All right. Uh, you walk in the front door and you're immediately confronted with the the gun safe with the door propped. Just slightly open. Yeah, I think I think we nudge it every. We so put the ashes in and close it. Yeah. yeah, and we say a prayer or whatever we do, since we're not like I don't think we're. Are we Christian? No, not at all. Actually, I think what we do is we look at you. I think all of us, all of us are like <laughs> we say somberly Danny, looking to our new prince to lead us in the official vampire mourning ceremony. For um, for our dearly departed former prince Randy. Yeah, Prince, go right ahead. Sir, sir, you, you wanna you wanna say a few words? Go right ahead. Since I am the prince, I I do just I stand there for a while, and then I just start a cappella singing uh, "Purple Rain." <laughs> <laughs> do you sing the guitar part? <laughs> it would be yeah, weird if he I didn't. Do, I do the whole seven minutes, and you guys just stand there, super awkward. Does that include the uh, the falsetto acapella outro? Hey guys, can we talk about how um, I was googling the lyrics in case you guys made me sing it? But the movie does have a sixty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I think that's nice. 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 <laughs> nice. But anyway, yeah, we do that, and we have our more prince, than we everybody. Play, right? What? <laughs> our prince. He lived um, like he died. Like, you know, it means a lot that you've gotten over this so he quickly. Died. You know, I never wanted this. Mm-hmm. Excavo, I never meant to cause you any sorrow. I never meant <clears> to cause you any pain. I only wanted to one time see you laughing. Yeah. 
I only want to see you laughing. Don't ruin my. Don't ruin Prince for me. I do a mean purple rain. That is that is harsh. Get put the vibrato on. The... It's hard to sing that song. It's up there. Into the room walks Jade Dewitt wearing oh, yeah. uh, wearing a pair of oh, noise canceling headphones that are plugged into uh, her phone. She's apparently listening to some sort of music or, or watching some sort of video. She doesn't seem to be noticing what you guys are doing. She's just sort of like rocking out. She's walking absentmindedly into the room, and then she uh, she looks up at all of you, and she seems startled because she didn't she didn't hear any of you come in. And then she she pops her her headphone off. She goes, "Oh, hey guys." Hey Jade. Um, Randy's going on his trip. Hey Jade. Have you closed? Oh, I, have I, you I closed that? This? That's probably a good idea. He's going on his trip. He just. Yeah, yeah, we just we just sealed it. We we're saying our farewells. He's uh, the safest. He's closed. on his oh, no, he's oh, Randy just went. Uh, Randy just went in the in the safe. Yep. Yeah. He uh, he showed us around, and he's ready to go to uh, the Middle East, I guess. So he said you could tell us everything else we needed to know. Oh yeah. Do not open the safe. Yeah. I don't even think we could. It's locked, so shit. Yeah, like I got, I, I yeah, I wouldn't have any reason to to open the safe. Yeah, I could, I could help you out. I'm supposed to to hang out here until he he sends for me, and then he said it might take like a couple weeks or something. Yeah, I thought he was gonna like Ooh, okay. hang out a little while longer, like say bye to me or something. It's weird that he went right into the safe, but like well, okay. Okay, I guess cool. he was super tired, and you know, I'm so glad you'll be around for a couple weeks. It'll be great getting to know you, Jade. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's totally cool. Yeah, I'm supposed to like, um, yeah, I'm here to help you. I'm here to to, help, to be at your disposal. Um, your wish is my command, and and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm here. That's more. I mean, you're, people, you're, you're, around. you're the one who knows how everything works. Uh. So uh, you know, maybe maybe you're the boss. You're here. You're the one. You're the expert. We're just trying to keep oh, yeah. going. A good thing. You're making money. You know. Uh, so yeah. You guys, solid. you guys are new here, and I've worked closely with Randy for a long time. So like, I'll I'll help get you up to speed. I I got a room down the hall. I'll be here. I'll help you out. I'll help show you around the city. Uh, I'll be around to to help you out with with lots of stuff. Try not to drink too much of my blood. Uh, Help you know, feed me, keep me all ghouled up, you know, all, all that stuff. You know, we'll we'll get we'll get good stuff, as long as you guys aren't dicks. You know, I can't right. vouch for the tree guy, but I think the rest of us are going to be fine. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means, but cool. Can I, is it cool if I go back to my room? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You have a great day. What did we decide that was? Vampire day. Right. Have a great view, Barbara. Have a great view, day. She turns around and goes back to her room. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my. So, um, sunrise is going to be in uh, about two or three hours. So, this gives everybody the opportunity to get comfortable and find a place in the building to, uh, to bed down and go to sleep for the first time in their new, their new digs. Uh, what's safest and furthest away from the sun is in the basement. When you first came into the building, when you're passing through the basement, you saw that there were, in fact, uh, several bedrooms and there were no windows uh, anywhere in in the basement. So that does seem to be what makes the most sense. I go and sleep in one of the bedrooms in the basement. Samesies? Samesies. I try and find one with what I can perceive to be wooden furniture, but otherwise I'm content. There's actually one that's just all leaves. (laughs) 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 The yard? (laughs) Yeah. And he goes to the the yard. yard. (laughs) 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 I try and find the best room in the house. There is a room that seems like a master bedroom in the base uh, in the basement. Oh yeah, 
I go in there. Cool. This brings episode three of New Comac to a close. Yay! We did it. We didn't colossally <laughs> fuck anything up this time. I like how you're in the, the master bedroom and I'm just in the people's bedroom. I gotta have the best. Rex <laughs> <laughs> All right. And be cop. Cool. And we episode, got a lot. Episode four, uh, we're going to go underground. Uh-oh. I mean, unless we all decide to do something crazy and out of the field that our They didn't say we couldn't go to outer space. Yeah. To the moon! We construct, uh, we roll to construct a rocket Outside the town, not above it. True. (laughs) This could go into space. However, there there aren't people in space. You need to bring a self-sustaining colony of people to feed from to be able to go to space. You're looking at them, baby. Hack into the ISS, break off all contact with Earth, get in there. Oh, man. All right, good game. Good game. All right, bye, everybody. Peace. Love you guys.